Hi all. Today I would like to talk about inventory management, which is one of the most important topics in production and operations systems. As you guys know that I have been following operations management textbook, which was written by Professor Kriyevsky, Ritzman, and Malhotra. I'm using the Global Tent edition. Today, uh, in the first part, I would like to discuss the importance of inventory management, what inventory management is and why it is important and why, uh, what kind of things uh, make uh, us to keep large inventory or small inventory. Okay, let's first talk about what does it mean, what, what inventory management is. Inventory management is typically planning and controlling of the inventories. Inventories such as raw materials, components, or finished goods, or work in process items. And as, as you guys know that we have been uh, focusing on that, every business would like to manage their operations and processes efficiently to become competitive in the industry. So, the planning and controlling of inventories should also lead us to be competent in the industry according to our competitive priorities such as quality, flexibility, cost, um, cost and speed, time. These are the four main traditional competitive priorities for companies. An inventory is typically a stock, stock of materials we keep in our facility and then we use them to satisfy our customer demand. Customer could be a workshop in our manufacturing plant or an individual customer in a retail store. That's why, that's why we use this stock of materials to support the production of services or goods as well. We can easily resemble an inventory system in a supply chain network of a fluid model, a fluid system. In this system we have a pipeline, we get input through the pipeline and then we keep them as in an input storage area. After we process them, we transform them into the desired outputs. And during the processes, we also produce, might produce scraps, defected goods or residues. So in this system, we keep raw materials working process items or components as an input after we process them we might also keep finished goods or working process as an output As I said before, there are typically three types of inventories. Raw materials are raw materials which are not processed before. Working process items or goods were processed before but are not finalized. Finalized for, from the perspective of end customers. And finished goods are ready to deliver to customers. Customer could be, customers could be individual end customers or another player in a supply chain network. In this example, we see steel blocks as raw materials. Suppose that we receive them from our suppliers. After we process them in our manufacturing plant, we produce nuts and ca its caps. After we pack them, we send them to our distribution center or to another manufacturer 
in which they will be used as a compound, as a component. If we are going to sell them to our individual end customers, we package them, send to our distribution center. Afterwards, we send them to retailers and individual customer visit a retail store and buy them. Okay. Raw materials, they could be work in process or finished goods according to the types of supply chain network. Why we keep inventory? The first and one of the most important reason is to get economies of scale. Economies of scale, as you guys know, that provide a cost advantages to companies. Economies of scale on the side of purchasing, on the side of logistics. If our supplier provides a discount, if we buy more, then we may want to keep more inventory than what we need or or if we are going to reduce transportation costs or logistics cost then we may buy purchase more than what we need and the second and the most important reason is the uncertainty in the supply chain network uncertainty on the side of demand and uncertainty on the side of lead time we don't know how much we are going to sell next month especially in traditional production system make the stock strategies we produce goods to the stock and then we aim to respond our customer orders quickly and deliver their orders in a short amount of time to meet their demand but Again, we don't know how much we will sell in next month. For that purpose, considering the uncertainty in demand, we would like to keep inventory. To feed to, 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 to feed the to feed the production in a facility, we also would like to buy more raw materials or components from our suppliers because of the lead time. Suppose that we already have a contract with our supplier such that they, as soon as we give an order, they are going to ship their orders or deliver our orders within, let's say, in five weeks. But it is not precise because of the uncertainty in the world, uncertainty on the road, uncertainty on the sea or airplane, right? Suppose that we, we, we purchase goods from China and it takes about 30 to 45 days through sea transportation. So what we are gonna do? Of course, we, we, we will have to consider uncertainty in the travel time. And for that purposes, we are going to keep more inventory than what we need. Okay, we will consider this uncertainty later on in the calculation of safety stock. Speculation is another reason. If you expect that the price will increase in future, price of a good, the price of a metal, the price of a gold, or the price of any good will increase, will, will dramatically increase in the future, then we may want to buy these goods, actually we may want to our future needs in advance and keep them as an inventory. And the last reason Last but not the least, of course, the reason is smoothing the product, smoothing the demand. As you guys know that sometimes we might have high demand, sometimes we might have low demand. However, we as a manager, as a production manager, operation manager, we would like to have regular capacity, a regular and fixed capacity in our manufacturing plant. Therefore, we produce goods for 
high demand seasons beforehand and keep them in an inventory to meet the future demand. Okay, so this is called smoothing. So if we are going to differentiate the reason of keeping inventory from the perspective of pressures for large inventories or small inventories, we can say this. Again, if we want to achieve high customer service, we prefer to have make the stocks make the stock strategy uh, then we keep large inventory because as soon as we receive an order we would like to meet our customers order from the inventory from the stock ordering cost ordering cost is also sometimes known as a setup cost okay it's about this as soon as we call our supplier and say that hey i would like to buy that much item could you please send it and if he, if any document any form needs to be filled any document needs to be prepared or uh, any inspection need to be done as soon as we receive the goods okay they all are accounted as ordering cost setup cost and if the setup cost and ordering cost is much is high then we would like to give less a few number of orders therefore in each order we give higher quantities so we keep large inventories and again to feed to support the production and keep the labor and equipment utilization we also would like to keep large inventories on the side of input stock area input input inventory and also work in process between workstations as we said before in order to get benefit of economies of scale in transportation then we may also want to have large inventories and the last one is for the payments or discounts how about for small inventories if inventory holding cost is high, by the way, cost of capital is just a part of inventory holding cost. Inventory holding cost is the cost of holding one unit in your inventory, one unit in your inventory, in your storage area. So it incurs insurance cost, facility cost, energy cost, investment cost. If the storage area needs to be frozen, then you have gas cost. Um, you also employ workers in your storage area. They all are included in holding cost. If the holding cost is high, then you would like to keep small inventories cost of capital could be accounted as the opportunity cost of money if the cost of capital is high the opportunity cost of money because inventory means money right cash however you guys know from accounting course that Cash is, um, how can I say that? 